Kal Halal Yahawo Bahashem Yahawo Shai Bahashem Raka Kodash Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Mostone who are worthy of double honors and who taught me this truth and who continue to lead through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai. Peace, blessings, and salutations to the Akim who are sincerely pushing this word for that penny a day. And also to the rest of the one third, the men, women, and children who make up the remnant, you know, who have been foreordained to receive this truth through mercy and sacrifice and faith by Yahweh Shai's um, atonement and propitiation in reconciling us to Yahweh, to Yahweh, you know, so that we may partake in the first fruits and in the first resurrection when he comes, you know, hoping that I'm a part of that number. This lesson is going to be entitled, Were These Two Men Justified by Works or Faith? Were These Two Men Justified by Works or Faith? I'm going to read two examples from the Gospels, you know, Yahweh Shai's own words, you know, because you still have men, unfortunately, pushing an agenda that you are saved by keeping the law. Men who have very low-level spirits, you know, and who are coming in after the spirit of the scribes and the wicked scribes and Pharisees, I should say, because some scribes and Pharisees were actually righteous and repented and followed Yahweh Shai. But the wicked scribes and Pharisees, you know, those, those spirits are back today. You know, the, um, the, the, the overzealous Sikari are an example of that. So let's just get into this. This is Luke chapter 23 and verse 39. And one of the, this is, this is when the Haushai was hung um, in between, you know, two, um, two criminals. He said, and one of the malefactors who were hanged railed on him saying if thou be the anointed save thyself and us and i wanted to look up that word um malefactors strong's g 2557 kakorgas kakorgas the strong's info says a wrongdoer i.e a criminal an evildoer a malefactor right and if you look up the dictionary definition for that it says a person who commits a crime or some other wrong. So these were men who have broken the law, right? They were being hanged for breaking the law, right? Criminals. It says, let me read 39 again. And one of the malefactors, the criminals, the wrongdoers, which were hanged, railed on him, saying, If thou be the anointed, save thyself and us. But the other answer him, rebuked him, saying, does not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation, and we indeed justly? So he was saying, we deserve this condemnation. We deserve to be hanged because, you know, we, we, we have done that which is wrong, right? For we receive the due reward of our deeds, but this man hath done nothing amiss, right? So he was accepting that yes, I have done wrong and, and, and I am receiving the reward of the wrong that I have done. I have broken the law, I have sinned, I am a criminal, right? And here's the next verse. And he said unto Yahweh Shai, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Yahweh Shai said unto him, Verily I say unto you, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. That was it. Now, this man was justified because he confessed that Yahushai was the anointed. And he repented in this moment of all the things that he had done amiss. And he asked Yahushai to have mercy on him. And that very act, that very act in that final moment of his life justified him. Because it was done with sincerity. And ultimately because he's a part of the elect. You know, showing... This is an example of a man that... that if, you, if you go back to... I think it's Matthew chapter 20. When it speaks about the, um, the parable of the um, of the vineyard. You know, and, and the workers working in the vineyard. This would be an example of a worker coming in at the last hour. The 11th hour. 
right? This man came in, you know, just a few minutes or a few hours or, you know, before his death. And he repented right at the end of his life. And he received justification, mercy, salvation without the deeds of the law. Let's go to another example. This is Luke chapter 18, verse 10. Two men went up to the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee and the other a publican. Let's look up that word. Let's see what is a publican. Strong's G, 5057. Telones. Telones. A tax farmer, a collector of public revenue, a publican, a renter or former of taxes, a tax gatherer, collector, taxer of tolls, one employed by a publican or former general collection of taxes. The tax collectors were as a class detested not only by the Jews but other nations also, both on account of their employment and harshness, greed and deception with which they did their job. All right, so that's what this man was, tax collector. Right? And, you know, they were generally regarded as being, um, you know, as the scripture say, greedy and, uh, and deceitful in their work. Right? So two men went up to pray to the temple, one a Pharisee, the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus within himself. He says, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. Right? So this man was boasting that he kept the law. This man, let me say that again. This man was boasting that he kept the law. Right? Verse 13. And the publican, standing afar off, would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. He was what? A sinner. Meaning he's confessing that he does not keep the law 100%. He has broken the law. He is guilty. But he said what? God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man, this is Yahushua's words, you know, this is in red. This man, went down to his house justified rather than the other. For every one that exalted himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Be careful of the, 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 the road that you're walking. If you are boasting in your fringes and your ability to keep the law, you are walking in the wrong path. This man... This Pharisee was boasting in his ability. And matter of fact, he, he missed the whole point of the law because he didn't love his brother as himself, his neighbor as himself. So he missed the whole point of the law, right? He thought that the law was, was just a collection of carnal ordinances and forgot the spiritual significance of it all, right? And he boasted in it. Matthew 3, verse, Romans 3, verse 27. Where is boasting then? It is ex excluded by what law of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Right? Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. And we just read two examples of that. The malfactor on the cross. By faith, he was justified without the deeds of the law. And this man here that went up to pray the publican, he said, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. His faith justified him. No, we're not saying that you should abandon the law. Matter of fact, if we go back to Romans 3 here and we jump down to verse 31, it says, do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid, we establish the law, but we do not boast in it or our ability to keep it because we can't. This is Matthew 23, verse 23. Woe be unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin, which are all um, scented uh, um, herbs, you know, that, that are used to beautify yourself and your home, and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. Judgment, mercy, and faith. 
these ought ye to have done and not leave the other undone. Ye blind guides, ye strain at a gnat and swallow a camel. Won't you scribes and Pharisees hypocrites, for ye make clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within are full of extortions and excess. Though blind Pharisee cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter, that the outside of them may be clean also. Right? We're going to wrap here. Right? We're going to see who, who who did Yahusha come to save. Right? Sinners are those who boast that they're keeping the law. Matthew 9 verse 10. And it came to pass, as Yahusha sat at meat in the house, Behold, many publicans and sinners came and sat down with him and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto his disciples, Why eateth your master with publicans and sinners? But when Yahawashai heard that, he said unto them, They that be whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. If you are boasting you in your ability to keep the law, right? I say, oh, I keep the law 100%, right? You are saying that you are whole and righteous. You don't need Yahweh Shai. Matter of fact, the scripture says that. Right? If you strive to be justified by keeping the law, Yahweh Shai is made of none effect to you. So you're saying that you don't need Yahweh Shai. I'm guessing that's why, you know, your camp teaches that Yahweh Shai should not be worshipped. Right? Verse 13. But go ye and learn what that meaneth. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. For I am not called the right I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. Right? Kal halalamla yahaw basham yaw shai basham give me a spirit to do this lesson. Till next time, hopefully it was edifying. Shalom.